<laughs> what up, fam? My good friend, brother from the break, aka BFAB, went to the GHQ store this past weekend, 4th of July weekend, and picked some stuff up for me. At the same time, he got to kick it with Dan and get a little behind the scenes tour of what's going on with their world during this whole pandemic. But not only that, a little update on the Making Island, and BFAB knows Jack Squad about Brickmania. This is actually a pretty cool perspective to see him with Dan. So I asked Dan to see if Brother from Millbrick can get a little sneak peek on the Macon Island, or at least where it's at right now. Well, BFAB was actually given the opportunity to actually kick it with Dan. So leaving leaving a GHQ store back door here. Oh, so this is our customer service area. I mean, it's all locked up for the weekend. Um, Kitty's in there, but <laughs> that's basically my office is in there along with the customer service. This is actually a print room. Oh, wow. So we have our printing operation. We can go to the next window, you can see a lot more. Um, oh, there's a lot to this building. I didn't know there's so much here. Well, the building is is 225,000 square feet. Oh, dang! So it's huge. And during World War II, it was a uh, they they built the Norton bombs. Oh, dang! So it was a top secret military, uh, you know, I guess technology building. So it was owned by General Mills. So this this is our print room, which is actually it's locked up right now, but. We have uh, we do all of our instruction books, uh, cover printing, stickers, everything that's done here. We do it in house. Oh wow, that's crazy! You also do pad printing, right? So. We don't do any pad printing. We okay, do, we do UV, UV printing. And actually, this guy's over there printing right now. So if you want to see it? Oh dang, that's awesome! See it. Yeah. So the rest, of, this this is we have like a big space at this end of the building, and the rest of Brick Mania where we started is completely at the other end of the building. So it's a bit of a hike. So. It started off was built by the Northern Pump Company, and prior to World War II, uh, it was built about the 19, early 1930s, and they built gigantic water pumps. But as things got closer to World War II, they switched from pumps to uh, building five-inch nail guns. So yeah. as the war became more in imminent, they actually ran out of room in this building and sold it to General Mills. They moved out to Fridley, built this a huge armament plant that's actually still there now. Uh huh. So the FMC and DNSF plant that's out there. So you guys also recently moved in here, correct? Because I know you guys were at Mall of America. Well, we had a store in Mall of America. We started. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So the Mall of America store was our first like retail store, and we're just trying to see what sort of uh, response we could get in a retail environment. It was kind of our experiment. After five years in the mall, they kept raising the rent. We couldn't afford it anymore. Oh, dang. And we couldn't get a bigger space because it was just too expensive. Oh, so yeah. So we opened up the GHQ store as an alternative. Oh, nice. So for less money that we paid for a little shoebox from Mall of America, we got a store for almost five times bigger. Oh, dang. So we got it open just in time to not be able to do activities with it. But I mean, this place is huge. Holy crap. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. It's a big building. When I saw the building, I mean, it didn't look that big. Maybe it's the angle that you come in, but like, dang. <laughs> well, you're only seeing part of it because uh, in the front of the building is that tire place. Oh, yeah, that so is true. So we're behind the tire place. Now. It's, it's like a big, gigantic triangle with the corner of this. So it's still not there yet. So fast forward to World War II. This building became the top secret technology center. North bomb site uh, was built here. Uh, German sent... Spies here to actually steal the plans from the Norton Bomb site. And there's a vault upstairs that they actually broke into and stole the, stole the blueprints for it. So, when you got this building, did a lot of the history, like, did you get it for like history also? Or? Well, yeah. honestly, the reason I chose this building is it was a cool building two blocks from my house. Oh, I didn't know anything about the building. We don't own it, we just rent it. Oh, okay. so, uh, there's no way I can afford this building. It's, but when we <laughs> moved in here, it was all industrial, it's a lot of small businesses. And like the other end where the store is, it's like artists. Okay. So we took over this. This was like completely gutted when we got it. We built, this is our, our offices. Um, it's kind of our second space in the building, but we had to build it from scratch. We have a bar in our office. <laughs> That's the lie. Which hasn't been, we usually used to have beer on tap. We haven't had beer on tap since the Corona. Yeah, so it's been a little, we've had to separate everybody out here. Used, used to, it was built for seven people. And at the time, we had like six people working here. Okay. Uh -huh. So we are a lot bigger now. Uh, we have like 40 people. So I'm assuming like you guys employ a lot of military people or? Um, we do. We do and we don't. Okay. Uh -huh. So we have we have people who have, have and currently in, have in the past 
been in the military. Um, we have actually one guy who's actually on deployment right now. So, okay, nice. So he's uh, or he's training. He's, he's out in Wisconsin training his unit, his National Guard unit is going to be deployed. So I don't know. I don't think he can even tell me. <laughs> oh, I get that. Um, but no, I mean it's it's just like a lot of people from various backgrounds. So it's Lego enthusiasts, history enthusiasts. People just, you know, they want a, a cool, engaging job. So. so you're responsible for the blacksmith shop, I believe, right? Yes, the Lego blacksmith shop. Okay, that's awesome. So you're familiar with that? I am familiar. Yeah, I did a little research. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what, did that come out like in the 80s, 90s? Maybe? No, it's a copy, you know, it's it's copy of the style of 80s Lego style, and I put it out around uh, 2000. Okay, 2000. And then the Lego licensed to the company. So. Oh, nice. So when I stopped making it, they approached me and said, hey, we want to make this. Dude, the first license I actually have one. It's in the it's in the display case right there. In that bag. I think my mom gave this to me. She bought it. <laughs> just, just recently gave it to me. But that's this is the original. I mean, this isn't the original. This is this is Lego's version of my blacksmith shop. That's the set. Oh dang, that must be a huge accomplishment for you. You know. Well, yeah, it was surprising. I didn't submit it to Lego or anything. They, they just approached you. Approached me that one of my customers. I made twenty, like twenty two or twenty four of them originally. When I announced I couldn't make any more, turns out one of my customers was a vice president of Lego. Holy and crap. He said, hey, we want to make this. We want to continue making it. It's a good looking set, dang. That's so, awesome. That's a big accomplishment. Dang. Yeah, that was, that was, they've never done anything. Nowadays, we use this room. This is kind of our design room. So all these drawers, well, not all, but, <laughs> but pretty much most of them are filled with Lego bricks of different colors. So the designers have their own uh, pallets of bricks to, to build with. Um, so we have our own palette, you know, basically each drawer is a different color. It goes all the way down the line. So any color you need, any part you need, you would know exactly where to get it um, and where they belong. So. Dang, y'all have, you have everything, dang. Yeah, well, we try to make it simple because when we're in the middle of designing something, we want to know where everything is and not have to go hunt. So this is sort of the design designer's room. It's not, we've spread everybody out so we're not totally full. It's good here on the weekends. You can, Actually, wander around. 3D designers kind of live in this area. This is my other office. This is my design office. It's kind of a mess. Oh, that's good. I design my stuff here. I have another office where I do all the business stuff. And, uh, the official office, which I hardly ever go. Um, 3D digital design goes here. So all the animations, if you've ever seen any of our videos, it's yes. all done right here. I believe uh, Beyond the Brick plays a lot of your guys' yeah, yeah, animation sure. stuff in the beginning of their videos. And I'll bring you through the where we do our 3D with Watcher stuff. They tried to build the floor in here. This used to originally was outside. They made an addition to the building, but there was uh, furnaces here for the foundry. Oh, they dang. built these big pumps and, and guns. They uh, they had to you know use the overhead cranes to move everything around, all the equipment around, all the stuff in the building. It's all still here in the building. The floor we had to make level and then cover up a bunch of quenching pits where the, <laughs> the, they would use the harden the steel. So. It's kind of dark. I don't know if it's going to work pretty well for you here. Well, I think yeah, people will be able to see. These are those, those orange things in the corner are three D printers. Oh dang! So we print parts that Lego doesn't make, like the helmets, the guns. Yeah, yeah. And right now they have uh, some jigs they're making for, for printing on figures. But this is this is a raft of lunar rover wheels. Holy crap! So we can make whatever that is twenty five at a time. Uh, looks like thirty at a time. But these three D printers, it's kind of you know Sunday afternoon. Nobody's nobody's here working on them. So, wow, <laughs> and those stuff are expensive in general, right? So, um, I mean, they've gotten cheaper over the time since right, they're right. more so available. These, 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 I mean, relatively speaking, they're pretty expensive. Yes, yeah. Compared to the, we we bought a printer like seven years ago that couldn't even compare to this, and that cost way more. So, these are doing like almost you know they look like they're molded. They're, they're, the quality that we're getting out of these is, is, is so. You know, we're happy enough to put it in our kits. The stuff that we were doing five, six years ago, we would never sell to, to the public. So, yeah, the technology has come a long way. and they're, they're, they're way cheaper. I mean, they're not, like, super cheap. Yeah. Um, cheap enough for us to have five of them. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in this way, it's just, there are people actually working on, on some yeah. now, trying to get ahead for the weekend. But these guys here are actually printing our carts. When I say printing, they're printing nice. artwork on the... On the parts so if you want to. Oh, damn. So you just like run out through color, re color registration. Yeah, registration. 
I test the positioning of the first one, then when I test the last one, since we've done that work before, we can uh, print it about the same <laughs> the <laughs> second time. So these for like the, the Humvee guys? Or the yeah, modern, modern soldiers? Yeah, modern is it army guys, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Dang. So just test printing and adjust it a little bit and then run them out. Yeah, I mean, so the, the quality of your guys' minifigs is amazing. I know Shy bought me one. Like, y'all have printing in the legs. That's crazy. <laughs> well, that's what they're doing now. So they, they right now, they have the arms ripped off so they can print the sides. Yep. Um, and then they have to put the arms back on and do another print with the sides. Yep. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. So when you're doing these, how many do you do eight at a time? Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen, okay. Yeah, two sets of eight. Yeah. Um, uh, it's limitations of uh, jigs and... Right, the the, print, the printing, you know, in order to get that precise printing, we can't use the whole print bed, and we just yep. never, we never line up, so we can only print small batches at a time. Yeah. Which is why they're never available. It's like, it takes so many hours to make even just one figure. Yeah. So, how many prints are on this one? So, uh, so there's the arms, that's two sides, two more back to front six, the heads of full 360, so that's basically four, but it's um, all of them are one. Um, and the helmet, which I think is three more, so it's upwards of what? It's like 11 bricks for that. Yeah. Holy crap, dang. Yeah. I mean, you could tell it in the product. I mean, I held one of the Brickmania minifigs before. Really good quality. It won't rub off either. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it, once it's UV, UV cured, so as soon as it's printed right on there, it's permitted. Yeah. Oh, dang. So you better make sure it's right the first time. Yeah. <laughs> so Lego doesn't do UV printing. You guys do it, right? Yeah, yeah that... Lego does pad printing. Oh, okay. um, And pad printing is arguably a better process because it doesn't leave any surface on, on the parts. Um, there's more you can do. You can't do metallics. There's no UV printer that will print metallics. So we have to fudge. We have to kind of make up our own metallic light colors. Okay. Um, but we can do that. In pad printing, you, you basically... It's one pass, one color, like a t-shirt. You know? yeah. It's like if they want to print white, they, they have a white pad, and if they want to print different colors over it's different colors, that's a really complex process. Um, I don't have anything against it. It's just um, we can do so much more with this, uh, so much quicker. If you're yeah. pad printing, um, especially for small quantities, the setup would be horrific. Mm -hmm. The companies that do pad printing, like Citizen Brick, do a really good job, but they're kind of limited because the setup time versus you know, how many you once you set up, you know, spend all the time setting up the pad printing, you might as well make 10,000 copies of everything. We just can't even get figures in that kind of quantity. Or, you know, it, it would, we, you know with, with 400 designs, we can't even do that. So. Understandable. Dang. So, so, we have, what, how many, five, six weeks worth of printing all queued up at a time? Yeah. So, uh, we have, you know, every week we have new releases coming out. We have production that we have to meet. So, we're like, kind of like, Assembly lining stuff in, and these guys are just getting a jump on on next week's production. Oh no! All the maintenance for the machines, um, so that when it comes to having the full crew here on, on Monday, they won't have to stop and do any maintenance. Everything will be up ready to go, just printing solid solid all the way through the week. So counting on all the parts. This is a lot that goes on. So. Yeah, you guys also hand sort and everything. Like yeah, yeah. Here to walk through. This is this is production. So this is where. Uh, this used to be our entire production was crammed into this room, and we had to spread out because of COVID-19. If you want to step over this chain, I can walk you through the, the area here. So we've actually spread out. So now we call this the batching room. That when we first start a set, like designers like myself will say, here's a, here's the parts list. We're going to make 100 of these kits. Um, we hand it off to the batchers who will go and find all the parts that they're going to need to make 100 kits. So this is our parts wall, and everything in these bins are all brand new parts that we we bought from you know Bricklink or even just gone to break broken up sets ourselves. Uh, so we have all this raw Lego. We go pull what we need. Typically, we can only get about twenty percent off our wall. The rest of it we have to order for the kit. So uh, as parts come in the mail, they go here. The batching people do their magic, make sure everything's counted out, checked in, counted out, and then. And it goes to the next station over here, which is basically stuff sitting around waiting for parts to arrive. Come up through here, you can see all these, these buckets all have color-coded labels. Each label represents a different, each color represents a different week of production. So they're green, purple, blue, and it just goes down like the rainbow. 
So every week's a different color, so they can quickly identify where they are in the production cycle. Just based on color. Dang, y'all are very coordinated. We have to be. We 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 we've, we've learned that if we if we drop the ball even for a day or two, it the, it's just like a cascading effect of, of stuff piling up. You know, uh, production doesn't stop ever. Every week we have we have to get releases out. Uh, the gentleman who sits here, his job, sole job at Brickmania is just to buy parts. Okay. So he has a full we have a full time parts guy. So the dude's buying parts. Okay, that's awesome. That's so cool. yeah, so basically, it, take, it takes a whole week to buy the week's worth of production. Parts that's crazy. Production. So your main job is designing. You're a designer. You have a few other guys working yeah. on stuff too. Yeah, there's a. Uh, it's probably for every one designer. There's yeah. Probably like ten other people backing that process. Oh so, dang! So we have like four designers. But there's a, like you know, ten ten other people doing the actual production work. So, uh, crazy. Yeah. Huge team effort? It is. It is. And you'd see it during the day. Of, um, actually, it, it's not as crowded as it was because we have people working at home, people working all over the building. Uh, this room out here, in fact, these two rooms together, we used to do public events here. Oh, so really? We did World War Brick. This was all full for the public, and we were actually just getting ready to do another World War Brick in June. It would have happened June. But it summer. got canceled, yeah? Yeah, we canceled it because of COVID-19. And so we spread out in here. Um, doing our production. So this is actually each one of these stations over here uh, is where people are actually getting them. And they'll basically do 50, 50 sets at a time, hand sorting everything. Um, but we, we spread everyone out so they can sit at their at their workstation, not have to wear a mask. Uh, and they'll just arrange 50 cups out one piece at a time. It seems like a very comfy place, even though it's like a factory, you know, it seems very just comfy, kind of at home. Well, like. it's, it's laid back. It's yeah. very laid back. And most of the people who've been here, they've been here for a while, so it's, it's like, we know our jobs. We just, we just get they like you, you're a good boss. Uh, you have to ask now. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the center here, this is what probably Shai sent you to, to, to film, is the, uh, get an update on the LCAP that we're building. You in the service? Oh, I'm not. I'm just good friends with Shy. <laughs> yeah, well, his, he, he in particular is, is a Marine, and he wanted, you know, we've been building this uh, LCAP, or LCACs, and to house the LCACs, we're building this this uh, amphibious assault ship. Okay. Uh, so it's USS Macon Island, and it's really hard to visualize. I was kind of hesitant about having you come in because it's in such a state of disarray at, at the at present moment. But basically, an aircraft carrier with a well deck that these hovercrafts can come through. Okay. So, if you can, it's hard to imagine it, but this ta it's going to be about as big as this table when it's all done. And all the stuff laying on here, it's, it's actually laying on the blueprints, the schematic of the whole aircraft carrier. Oh, dang. Uh, or amphibious assault. So, you guys already kind of digitally designed it already, correct? Yeah, we, took, we took a 3D model and we, we blew it up to the size that we wanted and actually built a, uh, laid a grid over it so we have a, you know, kind of an idea of how big it was going to be. And you see some of it here. We get a side elevation view. It's it's actually color coded. Each color representing a different layer of plates. Okay. So it's like a rainbow as you can count up through the through the plates. Um, it goes up eight colors. Uh, I think it's about eighteen times. So just to get to the right elevation. So basically, like a topographic map that I follow to build the ship. Like the big ship that was in GHQ, oh, huh? I did that all by eyeball. It took forever. Holy crap! And this 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 process is really going to speed it up for me. So you can see I made my calculations of how big this whole thing's going to be. To get to the middle, it's 148 plates deep, and it'll just be a display piece. Oh, nice! So the the battleship that's in there, the USS Missouri, has traveled around the world pretty much. Well, it's never left North America. So I mean, that's a beautiful design. I mean, yeah. Right, and it's, it's designed to travel, as this will be. So this will go to, like, shows, conventions, um, historical events. So by designing this, what do you feel like you get out of it? Is it more like promotion, like, hey, Brickmania designed this, or is it just, like, like an accomplishment, like something you wanted to? It's a to... little bit of everything. It's kind of like this This isn't really our core product. Yeah. You know, we, we're never, ever going to be able to make our money back that we put into this. Understandable. Um, but it does open doors for us. Yeah. So you could say, like, you know, we get to bring Brickmania into a museum, um, set up a historical display, and say, "Here's all these are all models that we sell, uh, or we've just made, or just do it for the satisfaction of doing." It. Yeah, that's crazy. Dang. So, you know, I've I've been building Lego ships since I was a kid, and 
the, the budgets just got bigger. In the, in the, <laughs> the more money you make, the more you can put into like building cooler stuff. Well, and stuff this is designed to whatever. be scale for the figures. So um, it's crazy. When it's all done. There'll be all these airplanes on the deck, helicopters. The hovercraft will be be in the well deck. Um, it's hard to imagine now, but it, it's going to be as big as this whole this, this table. So I think seeing a lot of the stuff up close, it's even better looking in person. <laughs> like I see a bunch of like Shy's reviews and stuff, and like the stuff look cool, looks cool and stuff. I mean, I'm not a like a military person, right. so I understand how it means more to him and you guys, you know. But like, that's like all this stuff is amazing. Dang. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is this is sort of where the this, this is being built. We just took a break. Uh, I mean, we, th this was supposed to be done by now. Yeah. And since the coronavirus happened, we had to cancel all our events. Like suddenly, it's like on the back burner. Like I get that. Yeah. Deadline. Um, we did get a bunch of people pitching some money. They donated money to help us build the ship. Took the money that they per that they gave us and purchased a giant Lego collection. Oh, damn! Selling local in town here, selling off their their, uh, their collection. And we will be able to take this and use it to build the ship. Uh, without having to like you know way cheaper than if we were to go buy all the parts brand new. Okay, so this is a whole person's collection. All this, this? Is a collection. That's this, oh my god! It's it's sitting on top of the schematic. We just got this. It was kind of an opportunity happening. We're going to get this, so we're going to sort it all out, and then uh, what we can't use in the ship will go into our parts for future use. Or we might even sell some of it just to that's crazy just to buy some of the stuff that we still need. So you can imagine this thing's going to be almost four feet wide, twenty five feet long, six feet tall. There's going to be a lot of bricks. In there. Have you got stressed out yet by working on this? <laughs> no, it's actually quite relaxing. The stress is more like finding the time. Yeah. Like, I really wish I had more time. And this weekend, I decided I was going to spend all weekend here working on this. Well, I get that because you're a CEO. You're running all these companies. You're running all these individual stores and everything, too. Right. Well, and it's 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 because of the, you know, the, I keep saying, keeps coming back to it because of the you know, coronavirus thing. We've had to change the way we do work, so. Uh, building all these cubicles, getting power, getting everything, everybody situated where they can continue to, to do their job in a safe way. That's taken a lot of time, too. So. Yeah, because you have to change the format of things. I we, get that. For a while, it was just me in here by myself trying to run everything. <laughs> That's slowly, crazy. Slowly, my employees, they, they came back and said, we want to keep working. So. I get that. Yeah, you got to make that money. <laughs> Well, they could, the alternatives, they could get it unemployment. I think they have more satisfaction. But they enjoy, you know, working and designing stuff. I feel like a lot of people who are passionate, you know, about things and, you know, it seems like they're passionate about, you know, designing and military stuff. Well, they I, want to be around what they're passionate about. And I think they were concerned that their job would go away. Yeah. That was the whole thing. Like, if we don't keep the company going, so we close the company, what are we going to do in six months from now? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I get that. Uh, the, the consensus was, for the most part, we're going to just keep, do whatever it takes to keep the company going so we can keep our jobs, keep doing what we, what we like doing. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> so how many stores do you run? I know you have one in Illinois. I know you have... There's three stores right now. Three? Okay. And the, the retail stores aren't really the, um, the the engine behind Brick Union. Okay. They're a place that we can actually go put our stuff in front of the public. Yeah. So it's like a permanent convention. We do go to events like Lego fan events, and, um, even historical events. We do some uh, museum shows, things like that. Um, but they're like fleeting weekend things. And if we can have a permanent store, people can just come and see us, come and see our products seven days a week. That was the point of that. So we can have events, uh, put our stuff on display. And like you said, when you see it in person, it's so much different oh, yeah. than yeah. seeing it on video. This is crazy, yeah. It's just so much bigger just looking at it. <laughs> yeah. This is... Yeah. This is one of the sets I did. It's It needs some help. This is one of two instruction books. I don't even know what happened to the instruction book. I got to build a third one. There will be three of these things inside this this, this ship. That's crazy. <laughs> so it'll be a fun display. We'll be able to go and take over like a whole section of a convention with an amphibious assault going on. <laughs> That's amazing, dang. So this this these two pieces right here represent what one section, one of five <laughs> sections. And it has to be built to travel, so it'll be built. In a five foot by two foot by over high this is section. Um, we'll be able to just pick it up, walk away with it. All the you know internal pieces you get to look at all the colors. Well, right and everything. Now, my my job today is going to be to to build the internal frame to hold all this stuff up. Okay. So you have to put a flight deck on top of this. It has to be sturdy enough to hold like maybe fifty pounds of Lego airplanes on top of this. Are you worried that like it might fall apart or now? No, no, you're confident. It's it's, it's pretty sturdy. I mean, but, these are the sides, the whole sides. It, it'll all be up very shortly. 
So that's why I was like, you know, a week from now, it'll look much different. You have half the hull when you build. Um, but I just have all the skin made. Once all the framing is in there, you'll probably be able to sit on it. Oh, dang. I think it'll be Easter. Dang. I mean, you're talented. You can tell the building techniques are very different. They're like at an angle and you're using all these uh, interesting mo uh, well, builds it's, and it's, whatever, it's, like yeah, building styles. Yeah, building out that out, outside texture. Uh, you want to be able to get that sort of, it's an illusion of smooth. Yeah. There'll be tiles on this and it's all done. So. Uh, my, my tiles haven't arrived yet. They're, they're coming separately. Then. I was fortunate enough to be able to get on one of the local Lego uh, lug, lug bulk orders. Oh, nice! Yeah, so, they give you discounts for that. Yeah, lug ball. Well, it's uh, if you, if you're in a club, yep. They, you can once a year make a purchase, special purchase from Lego for your club. Okay. And it's based on the number of individuals in the club, and everybody has a certain allotment that they can they can, they can partake in. Um, I was fortunate enough to find a well a club that has adopted me. Um, awesome! Dang. They uh, they let me they let me participate, and I was getting a bunch of tiles, and the tiles will help me make this give that nice smooth finish to it. It looks good. It looks really good. Yeah, it'll look even it'll look even smoother when it's building. Wow. It's kinda of cool. The the people that are supporting this build we call it plank owners. We sold like a, a piece of the, the hole basically and we'll, they'll have their message or their name written on it. Uh, so those will all be printed so it'll be like actually printed tiles all along the on the waterline of the hole. Oh dang names. I think Sky was telling me about that. I yeah, think, yeah, so that'll be that's 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 kind of a cool little feature. And then we made a whole bunch of sailors that will be on the ship. And some of those plank owners get the sailors, too, that they can with so they have to have their figure. Being social distancing, it's not obvious plastic, it's not going to stop it. Give everybody a safe area so they can work, they can work without having to wear a mask. So this is, this is Monday's project, getting all of these. Oh, my God. So you probably saw that airplane sitting in there. <laughs> that this, did. This is the kit. Holy crap. So <laughs> The empty box alone costs twenty bucks. Too. Holy crap! I mean, y'all, you know, people got to pay for a premium product. I mean, yeah, brick made is expensive, but you pay for good quality products. Yeah, we, so. we try to make sure that it's it's you know minimally label quality. Yeah, I mean, every the, the raw materials, like yeah, everything we do, we want to make sure that when you're getting a, a brick mania kit, you're getting not only the premium contents, but the stuff that we're adding to it. Yeah, I mean, not to say Lego, but y'all's minifigs are amazing. Like the quality, perfect. You know. Yeah, Lego needs to take some of your guys' uh, style, not like, you know, style and copy what y'all are doing, but like, <laughs> you know, improve their products and I, I, make better minifigs. I think what we do, and not just Brick Mania, but the whole aftermarket, really pushes Lego into going, hey, you guys can be better, because if we can make it better, yeah. um, you can make it better. And I think the impetus behind the whole, like, minifig, you know, the, 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 the minifig series, and, you know, that is all because of the fan creations. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, like, all these, like, you know, the side arm printing or even the leg printing. That's kind of a newer thing for Lego. Lego, every right. once in a while, will throw a minifig that has, you know, arm printing or leg printing or well, whatever. I think they feel embarrassed that they don't want to <laughs> it's, <laughs> Oh, it's so true. It's so true. The thing is, they have not still reached your guys' level. Like, you know, the printing on the inside of the legs, you know, and all that, like, crazy stuff, you know, or, like, all-around yeah. printing. And, well, they, they might, you might have to re-examine how they do their manufacturing. Sure. I think they're kind of, you know, they're on a different scale. Yeah. So they're thinking, like, oh, we can't just make... 400 figures we got to make 400,000 figures so, yeah you know they're doing what they have to do to make it quickly you know, done quickly and 100 percent uniform yeah and they can't pay somebody to sit there and like eyeball every single piece like we do yeah for sure but it's um a different scale and well i just look at like superhero minifigs and you see how like little details those minifigs have on them yeah and then you compare it to like your guys and minifigs and you're like oh dang you know uh, the, and the price is there too yeah so true you're, you're getting what you pay for it. yeah you know Inexpensive usually means you have to cut some corners, and they're cutting corners on their process. I'm sure their bricks are, are still, you know, there's nobody can compare the quality of like, consistency. Yeah. You know, they don't get everything 100% right every time, but it's, it's darn close. Yeah, for sure. I get that. Dang, 25 of those. So when you make a product, right, I heard that you kind of like throw out like, hey, who wants this? You kind of do like pre-orders to kind of guess we how have, many to make. Um, yeah. We started doing pre-orders with some of our big kits, like last year and the year before, like, Hey, we're going to do this. If you want to get involved, pre-order now, and you guarantee you have a spot. Yeah. And our customers have been pushing us to do more and more bigger and more stuff. I'm like the only way we can keep up this sort of demand is to say everything over a certain dollar value is going to be pre-ordered. Yeah. Or allow people to pre-order. We just don't have enough money. I mean, we have six weeks worth of production 
in the pipeline at any given time. We have to buy all of our, pay all, pay for all of our materials up front. It's just that's that's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, no, I get that. We have, we have to figure out where that's coming from. Yeah, so you guys kind of got to gauge the market a little bit, kind of see what is in demand and everything. And you know. Well, yeah, we do that. And allowing us to do pre-orders does give us a little bit of a, like, a gauge on how well it's going to sell. Yeah. And we do small batches, so usually we can sell 25 to 50 of anything. Yeah. Um, but it would also help tell us, do what does it, is it worth doing a restock? Is it going to be enough interest for us to, to, to invest more money in have you guys ever brought back any products or that were like discontinued due to like hype? I know I was talking to Scott and he's like, I was trying to convince Dan to bring back this certain product or something like that. And I'm like, you know, um, there's a lot of reasons things go out of production. One is demand. Yeah. Two is we've moved on to other things. And the third would be, we just can't get the pieces. Yeah. So like, you know, we can't go to Lego and say, Hey, make these parts for us. Cause they're going to be like, who are you? We don't, you know, unless we're going to buy a million of them, they're, we're not, you know, we're not even going to get their attention. And they also, I mean, purposely ignore their sort of fan following. They just don't, they, they do. don't want yeah. to be like at the back and call of anybody who wants to make their own kids. Or yeah, true. Yeah. They, kind of look at you as like kind of competition, I guess, kind of. It, yeah, depending on where you are in the company. So yeah. It, for their retail, for certain, we're, we're competition, even though we buy a lot of their products. But yeah. We are selling to an adult fan base that they probably wish they were selling to. Yeah, and they can't do the whole military stuff that's against their brand, even though there's nothing wrong with military, it's against their brand. So you guys have to kind of fill that spot for well, you know, and, and the, the you people know, that want that. We are the people doing these gigantic two, $3,000 kits. And, you know, there's six, 7,000 pieces in each one of these kits. And Lego does one of those like once in a blue moon. Yeah. And we've been, ever since we've been doing this regularly, they've started doing it more regularly. I think we're kind of like, they look at us for like market gain things. And oh yeah, no, for sure. See what people would be willing to pay. Like I know at one point Lego didn't hit like over like five hundred, four hundred. Now they have the you know the Falcon out, which is like an eight hundred dollar set. So there, there was like there was for a long time there was a hundred dollar cap. Yeah. The only thing that went over a hundred dollars was the Lego train, the full train sets. Yeah. And now it's consistently you get two, three hundred dollars. If you know at a time they'll, they'll have multiple sets in that price range, and then you know once once in a while they'll come out the UCS uh, Millennium Falcon or something. Yeah. Like eight hundred, nine hundred dollars. Yeah, which they never used to cross that. You know. Yeah. Boundary, yeah. So is there something that you'd like to design that you haven't, you know, designed yet or like any secret projects you're working on? <laughs> there's no secrets. I, I think there's, I, I don't like to plan out too far in ahead because okay. um, I, I like to focus on the one project at a time. So okay. People always ask me, what's your favorite thing? It's like, it's always the next thing I'm working on. So I want to be able to devote my entire attention to something. And, and, and I feel like I need to do that because, um, if I'm not focused on what I'm doing, I'm probably not making it as well as I could. I get that, yeah, for so sure. I, I want to be able to have, you know, like coming in and working on the ship. I can't do it while trying to run the company at the same time. I need to have like, okay, everybody's gone for the weekend. I can come in and do it, um, not have to worry about whether there's enough hand sanitizer at, you know, this or that place, stuff like that. So. Understandable. Dang. Thanks for chatting with me. Hey, hey, no problem. Thank you, Dan, for letting BFAB kick it with you and showing him around the block in the Brickmania warehouse. Thank you, brother, for another break, aka BFAB, for going to GHQ for me, picking up some sets, and not only that, taking the time with Dan to give me some content to put on this channel. And if you made it with me all the way to the end of this video, please give me a thumbs up, a thumbs down, like, comment, subscribe below, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, guys. Peace.